Hi, welcome back to The Distressed Princess. I'm Rhonda, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to upgrade your stuff. Sometimes I get a little tired of the things in my house, and I feel like changing some stuff out, especially in the springtime. So I have seven really great budget-friendly ideas for you. So hang tight and we'll get started. For the first one, I wanna talk about lampshades. Why is there never any variety in lampshades? You have your two options usually, white or beige. Do you want white or beige or maybe beige or white? So I'm gonna break the trend and I'm going to paint this lampshade using Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint. That's right, I said chalk paint. And I'm also going to do some stamping on the lampshade with a rubber stamp and some apple barrel paint in light mocha. And you'll also need a spray bottle with water. Please note that this is a fabric lampshade and I wouldn't recommend this on a paper lampshade. But what you're gonna do is spray the lampshade with a misting of water. It doesn't need to be a whole lot, but just mist it down with water and then start painting on the lampshade with the idea of the water to help the chalk paint spread, which I have researched this a little bit. There have been people to do this and some people have done it this way and had great success. I felt like it was taking too much paint to get coverage. So I decided to add some water to the chalk paint, which I've also seen done. So just like a little tiny bit of water added to the chalk paint, like just a splash, just take it over to the kitchen sink, turn the water on and it just goes for a second, just like that. <laughs> and adding that little bit of water made all the difference in how this paint was going onto the lampshade. See how much better and even brighter that paint color looks. Also notice that I started at the back of the lampshade. I call the seam part the back because I always point that to the back of the room where no one can see. And I did that purposefully in case something went amiss and it wasn't starting out right, it would be facing the back. So I just continued on. I still was using the spray bottle with the water to wet the shade and then I applied the paint and it just goes on so smooth and when this is finished, you would never know it was painted. After it got dry, it did look like the fabric in the lampshade soaked up some of that paint so it wasn't quite as bright white, but that's probably a good thing anyway. You don't want it stark white. So then it was on to the stamping. I took my mocha color paint and I squirted a little bit out onto a paper plate and I used a brush to smear it around onto the paper plate, making like an ink pad, like you would dip your stamp into an ink pad, but instead of ink, it's going to be paint. I pressed the stamp down into the paint pretty firmly to make sure that I got enough of it on the stamp. So I stamped with my right hand and with my left hand, I went inside of the shade to give something to press against. And my first stamp turned out pretty good. It was a little faded looking in some spots, so I just knew that I needed to make sure more paint got onto my stamp. But each time before I dipped my stamp into the paint, I mixed it back up on the plate again to make sure that it was everywhere. And then I went in for my second stamp. And I didn't want these roses to all be uniform going one direction, so every time I did a new one, I placed the stamp in a different direction. I replenished the paint pretty often to make sure that it didn't get dried out. And I took the stamp around the edges at the top and bottom to make it look like it was going off of the lampshade and this is how it turned out.
this one's for all the folks out there that still have primitive type furniture that they may want to restyle. This is the cabinet that I bought when Primitive was all the rage, and I've already painted it white and distressed it to match my farmhouse stuff, but I still feel like it could be modernized a little more. This actually occurred to me when I was painting this piece when I had the door took off of it and the drawer taken out. I thought I kind of liked it better without them, so I put them back on and lived with it for a couple weeks and decided no, I think I want to give it a try and take the door off and the drawer back out. So out they went and I put them aside to use for other purposes. You know, I'm not going to just throw them away, but I cannot wait for you to see what an improvement this is. Already, just with that done, I feel so much better about this cabinet. Is it just me or do you guys feel it too? Unfortunately, this cabinet does have to house some electronics stuff, our router thingamabobber, but it also used to house my husband's PlayStation. And so we had cut the bottom of the backing, that beadboard, we had to cut it so that the PlayStation could fit inside there because I had to hang out the back a little bit. Blah, blah, blah. Well, anyway, <laughs> I do plan to replace that beadboard with another piece of beadboard down the road, but for today, I'm just going to cover it up with some canvas. Now, a little bit of styling. And she's all modernized up. There was just one problem. The lamp that sits on top of the cabinet has a hideous cord that has to stick out. Well, Amazon had the solution. They have this gadget that I will link in my description box below that solves this problem. It just plugs into your outlet and then you plug your cord into its extension cord and your wall looks a lot, lot better. And I couldn't be more happy with this makeover. I have this wreath that I really adore, but all of a sudden since it's springtime, I feel like it's looking a little plain. So off to Joanne Fabric I went and I was delighted to find that the spring florals were 40% off. And so here I found a nice bunch of white flowers that I felt would be a perfect addition to my wreath. The price was $5.99, so 40% off made them about $3.59. I didn't even take the wreath off the wall. I just started tucking little stems of these flowers, which I didn't even have to use wire cutters since they are put together with floral tape. They're easily pulled apart. And so I just started plucking some flowers and tucking them in my wreath. I didn't even have to use them all and I have these left over to use for another DIY. While I was at Joann's, I saw that they had a sale on their quilters showcase fabric, $3.99 a yard, and oh my gosh, how pretty are these prints? I was really drawn to these blue ones, and so I 
honestly didn't wind up getting any of these three. I found another one later on, but I did buy one yard of fabric. And I'm gonna use that fabric to do the easiest, simplest pillow cover ever. First, fold in one side of the material so that it makes one nice big square. And lay it out on your table so that it is in a diamond shape. Place your pillow at the top of the diamond and fold over that little triangle piece. Then you'll roll the pillow with the fabric. Then fold the bottom flap up and fold the top of the triangle piece in. At the sides, you'll tuck those and fold them like you're wrapping a present. And then fold that flap up toward the center. Make sure your corners are all tucked in nice. Then just tie those two pieces together in a double knot. And you can leave the tails out or tuck them in, but I prefer to tuck them in. Easiest thing ever, right? The next one is a bathroom upgrade. And so here is my bathroom, here is my toilet, and here is the ugly toilet flusher. <laughs> and I never really thought about replacing a toilet flusher before, but I happened to be in Home Depot looking for something else. I don't think it was when we were redoing my husband's bathroom. We were looking at plumbing stuff and I saw that you can replace just the flusher part of the toilet. I really liked this white porcelain looking one best because it kind of looks vintage to me. And so that's the one I picked up for $14.98. The instructions were all pretty simple on the back of the box and I set to work replacing my very own toilet flusher. And here it is all replaced. I did it all myself. It even works. <laughs> and I feel pretty accomplished doing this myself. Next up is something I've been wanting done for some time. This is the door in my kitchen that leads to the utility room where our laundry is. And this is the enamel laundry room sign that I picked up at Target for $7.99. Today's the day I'm finally going to get this thing installed. I measured and pre-drilled two holes and screwed it in place. Aw, cutie, cutie, cutie. Now the only next thing I need to do is get that doorknob painted or switched out. And the last upgrade is the very best one of all.
I hope you enjoyed this video today and got some good ideas to use in your own home to upgrade your own stuff. And if you want to see more DIY fun, just click the link that I provided for you right here and I'll see you next time. Bye.